Overjoyed that you are here with me today. Today, I want to take you through my imperfect but beautiful day of homemaking. Life is full of flaws, mistakes, messes, and hey, I'm a mother of four children, and that's to be expected. But it is nonetheless beautiful in its own imperfect way. Today, I have so many beautiful treats for you. We are going to be doing some spring cleaning. I have some projects that I get to, well, a few times a year, and they really need to be done. I want to share with you my favorite multi-purpose cleaner. Also, I have some new, well, vintage and old and crusty <laughs> thrift finds to share with you today. And, well, it's Jared and I's anniversary. And so we're going to be making a little treat for him when he gets home. We're going to be trying our hand at a pavlova. Raise your hand if you've ever made a pavlova. Please stay tuned and give me all sorts of wonderful tips in the comments below. When white sofas were all the rage, we got this beautiful um, linen looking sofa. I love the French design of it and I still am in love with it, but I do have to care for it a few times a year. I take off all the covers of the cushions and I spot clean them and wash them thoroughly. It's no wonder that families are bringing colored sofas back into their home because with pets and children, it's a little bit of a chore to keep it clean. But it's also a labor of love that I'm willing to do. I, I still love the look of the sofa and it brings me lots of joy. And so I don't really mind um, cleaning it a few times a year. And it also gives me the opportunity to do a little bit of a deeper clean and you never know what you're gonna find in these cushions. There's always some Nerf bullets and pencils, a few Lego pieces, and I just give it a nice good vacuuming and cleaning. I think if I had a colored sofa, I would still be doing all these cleaning processes. It just makes the whole room smell fresher when all of the linens, whether it's the curtains, the covers on the pillows, or the covers on the couch, when you give them a nice fresh wash, everything smells, well, a lot fresher <laughs> and a lot cleaner. Something that I feel like it definitely needs to get done a few times a year. I've been having a lot of fun with this book. For my last birthday, I asked for this set of books called The Complete Book of Clean and also Organization by Tony Hemmersley from the blog, A Bowl Full of Lemons, and she takes you through your entire house, cleaning and also the organization one, and helps you find solutions for both of these things. And then the book is also full of recipes for DIY homemade all-natural cleaners. So it's been really fun to kind of slowly go through the rooms. I haven't really done my entire house yet, but I hope to do so. So right now I am making the multi-purpose cleaner. And the recipe is two teaspoons of borax, one fourth a teaspoon of liquid Castile soap, and 10 drops of lemon essential oil. I'm actually using clove. I ran out of my lemon, um, but clove also has some antibacterial benefits to it as well. And I love the smell. And you mix it all together in a bottle with hot water, about 16 ounces of hot water in your spray bottle. 
and that helps to dissolve the borax. And then give it a good shake. And this has worked like a charm. I feel like it really gets things clean and I love the scent of clove that it leaves behind. I also love that you can customize your cleaners whenever you're making your own cleaner um, using whatever essential oils that you love most. So right now we still have a lot of our Easter decorations up. So I'll be taking down all of the Easter core today and giving the room a really good dusting and cleaning. I try to start from the top down, but at this point I feel like I'm just attacking what I can get done um, with a baby in hand as well. But I'm gonna be using this multi-purpose cleaner too to do my dusting today. What are some of your favorite spring cleaning routines or recipes or traditions that you like to do each year? I would love it if you would post down in the comments below and maybe we can have a little discussion about that. This old house requires a lot of dusting. There's a lot of cobwebs coming in through these old windows, but I find it to be a labor that I truly appreciate and truly enjoy. I love every piece of old lumber in here, all the architecture, all the details, the rusty brass doorknobs. I love it all. I think that it's beautiful. Every little dent that tells a story. This is a piano that I refinished in the beginning of our marriage. And back then I was really into this blue color. <laughs> so I actually stripped this piano and stained it a robin's egg blue color and refinished it. And it gets a daily hammering from the children. And since it's just the old family piano, I really don't mind. One new addition we added recently to this living room is this old record player that holds all of our records and we have a modern record player in there and bluetooth that we enjoy listening to music on quite often so i'm pulling out the easter box and organizing we have way too many easter eggs in here from easter egg hunts so i'm going to be getting rid of quite a bit of those plastic easter eggs probably donating those and going through well, things that we don't really need, making sure that everything for Easter can fit into one bin. And that seems to be the goal of, of keeping the clutter down. And now that the covers to the couch cushions are washed, I'm going to take them outside and hang them on the line to dry. And it's extremely windy today. Hopefully they will stay on the line. This is actually... Well, one of my children's obstacle course lines, and I'm multi-purposely using it today to hang some of our, our clothes. It feels so good when the weather is warming up, the blossoms are starting to come out. Nothing feels more like spring and bringing freshness into your home than hanging clothes up on the line. talking about simplifying your life here on the channel and keeping things simple for the sake of for the sake of your sanity <laughs> and so today I'm using this multi-purpose cleaner to do my dusting and to do my shining up and it's amazing how simple you can make things you don't need to go out and buy a lot of fancy cleaners although I do love me and Mrs. Meyer's dish soap and hand soap. They smell so good. 
But when the budget doesn't allow or when there's just not time to go to the store, it's nice to know that you can whip something up at home with the, some of the ingredients that you already have. Our minds are constantly being saturated and infiltrated by images that we see on the internet, on Instagram and other social media of people's homes and their lives. And what you're seeing are just pieces and bits of people's lives. And rarely do people film all of the messes, the dirt, the grime, the food that their toddler has splattered underneath the table. But just know that these are all humans. Everyone is having a mortal experience. And that means that things are messy. So hopefully today, you're seeing a little bit of that reality that's happening underneath the kitchen table. You're seeing the dirty toddlers, high chair. I wanna share with you guys some of the favorite finds I got from the thrift store lately. It was actually more of a curbside sale. There was an old antique store that was going out of business, sad to say, um, but they were selling everything. And they said that I could put whatever I wanted in this box for $3. So never mind the price tags, everything in this box I got together for $3. This is an original penciled sketch of a barn and I got the picture frame so that I could put it in it as well. I'm always looking for quilts and linens. I was excited when I found this floral quilt that I picked up to go inside the girls' room. Here's what it says on the tag. Let me know if you're familiar with this brand or maybe the date that it was produced. It's definitely not homemade though. I love the purple flowers on here and I'm going to give it a nice deep clean. It has some orange rust stains on there that I'm gonna have to get out. And I'm always looking for tablecloths. This is an embroidered white tablecloth and I love, love the weave. I love the embroidery and it's actually in perfect condition. So I have a little bit of a vintage tablecloth collection going on here. Here's another one. I just loved this happy green plaid that was going on here. And I figured since this box was $3 that I would throw all these things in here, give them a good wash. And if it worked out, I could keep them. And if not, I would just put them back in the thrift store. I picked up a few of these little plates as well. Uh, this plate is from France. I don't have very many dishes that have portraits on them, but I thought that was cool. And a few other things. I love to collect interesting looking antique plates, um, often to show them here on the YouTube channel. And I liked this picture frame. I might take out uh, the piece of art that's in it and reuse it for something else. And the last thing I grabbed was this little plate rack because someday I hope to do a little kitchen refresh and customize my kitchen a little bit more and just make it feel a little bit more like it belongs in this 100 year old little farmhouse. So I might use that someday. Nothing makes spring cleaning feel so fresh and beautiful as fresh flowers. And I love it when it's that time of year when I can walk outside and see what I can find around the property and bring in whatever fresh blooms are coming up. We also have some onions and potatoes that are starting to sprout out of the ground. I don't know exactly what put the thought into my mind that I needed to make a pavlova. Perhaps it was just the beauty and newness of it all. But all the fresh berries and all the fresh toppings that you can put on a pavlova seemed like a wonderful thing to make for spring. So I thought I would give my hand at it. The recipe that I'm trying today asked to rub the bowl with white vinegar before making it and it also is going to call for cornstarch and vinegar in the recipe as well 
I know that there are so many recipes claiming to make the perfect pavlova. Um, so I'll have to try a few of those recipes, but I'm starting out today with six egg yolks. I mean, six egg whites. <laughs> but I am going to reserve these egg yolks um, to make a lemon curd to go on top of our pavlova later. Pavlova, if you're not familiar, is a meringue that you can top with berries and whipped cream or curds or whatever topping that you would like to put on it and you can make it in many different flavors. In a separate bowl though, I'm going to be putting together some lemon extract, a couple teaspoons of cornstarch, and one teaspoon of white vinegar. I'm just going to be adding some castor sugar or white sugar, just in increments to these egg whites. I don't have a ton of experience making meringues, but I do know that the more that you do make something, the better you get. So now is the best time to learn how to make anything. And just rubbing the meringue in between your fingers to see if the sugar is dissolved is a great way to make sure that there's no crystally sugar in your meringue. Now I'm gonna add the vinegar and cornstarch mixture and mix that into our meringue. My husband gives me a hard time for constantly trying new recipes when there are some of his favorites that he wishes I would just put on repeat probably more often. But in a world full of cultures and new recipes and millions of things that I would like to try, I can't help myself. I have to try new things and experiment with new things. And it's just exciting to think that you never know if you've tried your new favorite thing. So I'm just pulling some of this meringue out to see if it will form a shape before I go on to forming the actual cake. And it looks like it's about ready to go. I did draw a circle on the back of this parchment paper, I think about 23 inches wide. But when it came down to it, I didn't really follow the circle. I was very focused on creating a shape here that was round and lifted and trying to figure out how I was gonna make a beautiful texture and shape out of this meringue. I wanted to build up a nice, stiff, firm edging, but also create a little bowl here in the center so that I could put some of that lemon curd and whipped cream and toppings here in the center. But it was all an experiment. The pavlova goes into the oven at a fairly low temperature. This recipe called for 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I did see other recipes that were below 300 Fahrenheit. But like I said, I would like to try some new recipes in the future. Some recipes were very particular about what a perfect pavlova is supposed to look like. And I was a little bit surprised to find what mine looked like. It was, it was like opening the oven to a surprise. My pavlova does have some cracks in it and it's a little bit golden. And so maybe you wouldn't describe it as the perfect pavlova. And maybe you are a pavlova snob and are critiquing my pavlova right now. <laughs> but what it comes down to is that it doesn't really matter to me how perfect it is. It's all about the journey. It's all about trying something new. And there is always room for improvement. For our anniversary, I just got some of these pictures that I have meant to be printed. We took these pictures back in the fall. They're family pictures. And so for a gift for our anniversary, I'm going to put some of these pictures into some frames and put them around the house. And I know it's so simple, but, but I know my husband and... He doesn't really like big, expensive gifts. He would rather I use my money somewhere else, and so he's more of a sentimental guy. So now for the fun part, and that is topping off our pavlova. The curd that we made earlier has been sitting in the fridge, cooling, and so that is nice and cold. 
And we're gonna load this baby up with lemon curd and top it off with some fresh whipped cream. And the beauty of it is that all of this filling is going to just fill in all the cracks. All of those imperfections of the pavlova just get filled with gooey, sweet deliciousness. <laughs> And I was thinking about all of the wonderful toppings you could put in this and you could make a Nutella or chocolate pudding filling. There's so many different toppings you could add to it. I'm basically just going to top it all with some raspberries and strawberries and powder, a little bit of powdered sugar on top. And it's just a very rustic, natural, beautiful dessert. I was borrowing a used picture frame that I found in the house and I wanted to use this one of Jared's grandmother to put on the table real quick. And on the back, she wrote, this is how I want you to remember us. And it brought tears to my eyes to think of her last moments here with us on earth were not maybe her best moments. They were not her best years of health. But she left us with this picture of some of her best years. And so don't worry, I will be putting grandma back into the frame after tonight's anniversary little treat. But to think that we can capture moments and pictures and put that throughout the house and give those to our families, it really is a wonderful gift. Opening up this pavlova was like opening up a little surprise. Since we've never tasted it before, ever, it had a crunchy marshmallow exterior, almost like roasting a marshmallow and the outside is golden and crispy and the inside has a gooey, soft marshmallow filling. And that was just topped with that lemon curd, which brought a nice tartness to it and some fresh whipped cream and berries. I couldn't imagine the day ending with a better treat. Each week I make a new video on restoring home, family, and spirit through tried and true homemaking skills. And I can't wait to see you next week. Love you lots.